Hey, buddy, watch this. Hello, hello, Regis Kilbin is the name, and Hearthstone is the game. And these are the 10 worst cards from the year of the Kraken. Now, you might be asking, what's the point in doing a list of the worst cards? How does that help anybody? Well, there's two reasons, really. Number one is it's just fun to talk about cards and some of the design mistakes that Blizzard made, but I also think it's helpful to guide people in future expansions towards cards they should probably avoid, shouldn't consider taking into their decks, and perhaps even dust if they have them laying around for additional arcane dust if uh, they need some to craft the new cards coming out in future expansions. So specifically, this list will cover any cards released from the Whispers of the Old Gods, One Night in Karazhan, or Mean Streets of Gadget Zan expansions slash adventure. All that said, let's go ahead and jump into the list. Starting off at number 10 is the Worgen Greaser. This is a 4-mana 6-3. And really, when it comes down to it, most of the time these days, vanilla minions, those without actual card text, just aren't going to be good enough. That said, some are better than others. For instance, Chillwind Yeti has always been the sort of go-to example for an okay vanilla minion, simply because a 4 or 5 has been able to contest a lot of stuff and survive against mediocre boards. But that's exactly where Worgen Greaser's problem lies. Since this is a 4-cost minion with only 3 health, it just dies far too easily to ever be successful. One mana lightning bolts kill it, frost bolts kill it, two mana minions with three attack kill it, one mana minions with three attack can kill it. So really, at the end of the day, Worgen Greaser uh, is just far too susceptible to death, doesn't open up any synergies or extra options. This is one of the worst, just vanilla statted cards we've ever seen. Up next at the number nine spot is the Twilight Geomancer. And really, this card's problem is that it's a Cthune synergy card that is terrible in Cthune decks. So you can instantly see the problem. There's really no advantage to giving your Cthune taunt. Often that might even be a thing you don't want to do. Uh, only if you're trying to stop some sort of really aggressive deck would you ever want to give your Cthune taunt. But usually playing Cthune itself is enough to win the game or end the game. Or if you get to that point, then you've already stabilized against aggressive decks. So the fact that Cthune has taunt is typically 99% of the time totally irrelevant. So instead you have here a 2-mana 1-4 taunt, which it also turns out is really bad simply because one attack is just not enough to get the job done and slow down any sort of aggression. Even against pirate decks, I just don't think this card would be good enough because it doesn't offer anything extra. So Twilight Geomancer, a Cthune card that Cthune hates, and therefore one of the worst cards. Now for the number 8 card... It's a legendary. From One Night in Karazhan, this is Morose, the 3-mana 1-1. One, one. This guy has stealth, and he summons an infinite number of 1-1 one, one stewards as long as he's alive on the board. So that sounds awesome. The problem, of course, is that a 1-1 one, one minion is so easily killed, even out of stealth, because the game has such a wide array of whirlwind style effects, any area of effect effect, and ultimately, even if this guy lives for 3 or 4 turns... His payoff still isn't that high because an army of 1-1s at the end of the day just doesn't do enough, particularly in the early game. Maybe if you lasted into a fatigue style battle and had a thousand one ones, you might accomplish something. But on turn three, he's such a slow play, such a passive play, such a risky play that Morose is almost unplayable. Now that could possibly change in the future with stuff like Rogue's Legendary Quest from Journey to Ungirl, but who knows if that would even work. So Morose right now is still one of the worst cards from the Year of the Kraken. Moving on to the number 7 spot is the Hunter Secret Hidden Cache. This is another card that's just way too slow to actually work in Hearthstone as we understand it these days. This secret gives a minion in your hand plus 2, plus 2. But of course it requires 2 mana to do that, so that's really not a specially good buff anyway. A 2 mana for a plus 2, plus 2 feels just average. And of course, this is a passive buff. In other words, it buffs something in your hand. So it's not an active buff like something like Blessing of Kings, for instance, where you might be able to act, do it instantly on the board and essentially give that buff charge by giving it to a minion that's already um, able to attack. So uh, first off, your opponent has to trigger this. So that could take some time. Secondly, you have to buff the minion in your hand. That takes some time. It has to wait at least another turn. Uh, and even then, the payoff isn't even that high. So ultimately, you've probably got two mana two to three turns invested in a very small reward. And that's 
why hidden cash and ultimately why hand buffs in general haven't really taken off yet. But even of the hand buffs that don't work as an archetype, I think this is probably the worst hand buffing card of them all. Up next is the number six card, Faceless Behemoth. This guy suffers from a problem that I'll often complain about cards for. That is that he's way, 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 way too slow. I think this might actually be the slowest card in Hearthstone. He takes your entire turn. All you're getting is a 10-10, which might sound like a really nice big minion, but think about all the other ways the game has to summon almost as large minions for a much cheaper or more reasonable cost. This guy doesn't do anything active on the board. He doesn't have taunt. He just sits there and gives your opponent all the time in the world to ignore him and, in fact, usually kill you. When you compare this card to things like Deathwing or even uh, Deathwing Dragonlord or Yasharaj, all at similar costs, you can see why this is yet another failed vanilla statted minion. I don't think they could get much worse than this just because Faceless Behemoth is absolutely unplayable and kills the consistency of your deck draw. Up next at the number 5 spot is a card whose real problem is that its condition is simply too difficult to actually fulfill. This is the Tanaris Hog Chopper, 4 mana 4-4. Four, four. With the battle cry of your opponent's hand is empty, gain, charge. Unfortunately, how often have you actually seen empty hands in Hearthstone? They might occur 1 out of every 10 games if you're playing an aggressive deck that has run out of gas. And even in those instances, is a 4-4 charge really going to help you all that much? It might make a trade into something um, like a Frothing Berserker, but that's still not going to be enough to win you the game. You'd probably rather have a really big taunt that's super cheap if your opponent's hand is empty. So a very rare condition that's met, a minion that's otherwise a terrible 4-mana 4-4 four four that's just completely useless 99% of the time. So even when it's at its best... Tanaris Hog Chopper is a very mediocre card, and the rest of the time, it's an absolutely awful card. Moving on to the number four spot is another card with a conditionality that's just too difficult to actually meet. It's Shatter, though, this time the Mage spell from Whispers of the Old Gods. It's a very cheap spell that, if it works, is incredibly efficient. Two mana for uh, an assassinate effect, essentially is really, really good. The problem, of course, with Shatter is that it requires some sort of setup or initiation to actually make it work. So often you're going to be utilizing two cards to fulfill this, and there's just not that many common freeze effects available to Mage anyway. You have things like Frostbolt and Ice Lance, certainly Water Elemental is also a pretty common minion with freeze, but none of those are ideal for just single target removal, especially when Mage already has access to things like Polymorph or even Polymorph 4 to serve as the same kind of one card removal tool for really big threats. And the upside of both of those is that they actually silence minions as well. So for instance, Polymorph is fantastic against a Tyrion Fordring. Shatter, on the other hand, requires you to use two cards to give your opponent a 5-3 weapon. So you can see there's a lot of deficits in this card, particularly in a class that already has access to such strong removal. So now it's time for the top three, starting off with Backstreet Leper. It's pretty apparent how bad this card is when the card it's probably named after, Leper Gnome, in the past was a 1-mana 2-1 minion with the exact same death rattle. And that was a playable card. I wouldn't say it was the best card ever. It usually required a super aggressive deck or some sort of death rattle synergies to make it work. The card has since been nerfed to a 1-1 minion, but still, Backstreet Leper is 2 extra mana compared to the old Leper Gnome, which was an okay card, a good card, but not, again, amazing. But 2 extra mana for 1 extra attack. So in other words, you gain very, very, very little over Leper Gnome, but you have to pay 2 extra mana for it. That aside, you don't even have to rely on the comparison. You can just objectively look at this card. A 3 mana 3-1 three is far too susceptible to ping effects in this game. Area of effect removal. It's just going to die instantly. When you're spending 3 mana, you're expecting to get some sort of value for it. But 3 mana for only 2 damage is not very good. There's much more efficient plays out there. So at the end of the day, Backstreet Leper is a far worse version of his cousin from the days of yore and ultimately just looks like a terrible card. Moving on to the number two spot, no list of the worst cards in the game would be complete 
without a Rager. This time around, it's the Amgam Rager, a part of the Rager family with other cards like Ice Rager and Magma Rager and Shadow Rager and so on and so forth. All of them are three mana. All of them have some sort of stat that is five and usually a stat that is one. This time around, the Amgam Rager is a 1-5, which is arguably better than the old school Magma Rager, which was a 5-1 simply because this minion can survive on the board a little bit better, but that certainly doesn't mean this is a good card. In fact, this is a very, very bad card. A one attack minion is often just completely useless because it kills very few things other than maybe other bad cards like Backstreet Leper that we just saw. That's about the only thing Amgam Rager uh, can actually kill. So this is just a big three mana cost investment for very, very little actual return. This guy doesn't impact the board. He doesn't force your opponents to do anything. They can basically just ignore him. Only in some sort of Hobgoblin synergy deck would Amgam Rager ever be good, but that's already relegated to wild, and I tested it, and it wasn't even good then. So Amgam Rager, unfortunately, yet another vanilla minion that just doesn't make the cut. So now it's time for the worst card from the year of the Kraken. This will come as no surprise to anyone who has paid attention to Hearthstone recently. Purify, the priest spell, is absolutely terrible. Why would you want to silence your own minions when they almost always have some sort of beneficial effect? And even then when you do, why would you want to pay two mana for a card draw effect that should cost way, way less? All it takes is a very simple comparison with this card and another priest card, Power Word Shield, which gives you a beneficial effect and draws you a card and only costs one mana with Purify, which has a 99% of the time detrimental effect, costs twice as much, and still only draws you a card. Now, certainly this has been tested in some decks with minions that benefit from silences, but there just isn't enough of that going around. It's not good even when it works. So Purify seems like a fundamentally broken card, and not broken in a good way, but broken in an absolutely miserably terrible, completely unplayable way. So there you have it. That's my list of the 10 worst cards from Year of the Kraken. You should feel completely safe disenchanting these cards. I can't imagine there's any way these are ever good, except for maybe Morose. There's a chance he becomes good in the future. But even then, I think it's a very, very, very slim chance. So if you have any thoughts, comments, or questions on this list, you guys know I'd love to hear that. Share your take in the comments below. But until then, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, game on.